Hey guys, Jake from Training here. This video is going to be a little different than other videos we've done in the past. The videos in this format will be much shorter and we'll dive into some more how-tos to do X, Y, Z, whatever you can think of. Please keep in mind that all the things shown are one of many different ways to accomplish a certain task within Intune. Today we'll be looking at mapping network drives. To accomplish this, we'll be using the Intune Drive mapping website as well as adding the functionality for it to work when not on-premise. All right, guys, so let's get started. In order to map the network drives, we're going to head over to intunedrivemapping.azurewebsites.net slash drive mapping. Now, I will put in the link or in the description down below a link to a blog post that will actually walk you through this if you don't care for video format. To begin, we're going to go ahead and hit build from scratch. There is an op upload option, but we're not going to worry about that right now. And you'll notice that it's going to give us an example drive letter A with a UNC path just to give you an idea of how to set everything up. You can either delete this one or just edit it right off the bat. I'm going to choose to edit. And we're going to go ahead and type in our full QDN. Now, in this scenario, we don't actually have any drives that we need to map, so I'm making one up as we go along. And you can go ahead and select whatever drive letter you'd like it to be. You give it a nice display name. We'll just go ahead and keep it with IT there. And you can add some security group filters if you'd like. For the time being, I am just going to remove those. You can add those at your discretion. And now you'll notice we have a drive letter named T with a UNC path in tune.training slash department slash IT. And we have a display name of IT. You can continue to add entries or you can start over. Obviously, you probably won't want to do that one. Uh, but with just these two here, I'm going to go ahead and hit download PowerShell script. And we're going to open that guy up and take a look at how it's configured. All right, so let's take a look here. I'm going to scroll back up to the top here. All right, so you'll see right here we have our drive mapping JSON value with a path that we had specified earlier. All of this, you know, is good and dandy. Basically, what it does is it creates a scheduled task that runs at logon that'll attempt to map your drive, which is great if you're on premise or you have an always on VPN solution. However, if you don't, we're going to add a few things to this script to look for two different event IDs that basically check to see was there any different you know, network connections that have happened, and if they have, run the script again. So this helps in scenarios where you connect to a VPN. That's obviously a network change, so it's going to attempt to map the drives again. And in the event that there is a network change, it'll still attempt to run the script to map the drives. However, if they're not accessible, nothing happens. So we're gonna scroll down to the bottom here and all this code and everything that we're going to be adding is in the blog post. Uh, let's see here. We're going to be looking for the trigger value right here. And I'm just going to copy this from our blog post. And you can delete everything down below here. If you want, you can keep this done section. Or I'm just going to replace it. So you'll notice we've added two extra triggers, trigger true and trigger three. Both of these are going to go to the network profile operational log path and look for the specific event ID 10,002 and 4,004. And again, those are two different event IDs that'll tell you whether or not you've changed your network configuration in any way. So we're going to go ahead and save this. And now if we want to deploy that inside of Intune, we're going to go ahead and go to endpoint.microsoft.com. We're going to select devices and we're going to head down to scripts. Now you could also make this a proactive remediation if you wanted to. However, you'd have to redo the whole script because obviously this creates a scheduled task. So we're going to go ahead and hit add Windows 10 and we're going to give it a name. And you can feel free to give it a description if you'd like. And we're going to browse to that file. And you don't have to run this script with uh, the logged on credentials. It doesn't need to be run in the 64-bit PowerShell host. 
If you have script signature checking enabled, you're going to obviously have to add your own signature block to this and then select yes. But for in this scenario, we don't worry about it. We're going to go ahead and hit next. And from here, you're going to select the group. I personally never use any of these three options, all users, all devices, or all users, and all devices. I always prefer to do a group that I've created. And in this scenario, I don't believe we actually have, I have not created one beforehand here. We're going to go ahead and select Jake's Fancy Computers. And we're going to hit next and add. So essentially what will happen, this script will run on the machine, which will then create a scheduled task. Let me pull up a picture here for you. Here we go. So this is what your trigger section is gonna look like. If you don't edit the PowerShell script, assuming you have always on VPN or your clients are always on premise, the only line you're gonna see is this at log on, any log on of any user enabled. If you did edit the script, you should see two additional events, which on event 10,002, 4004, within the network profile operational log, it'll run. I hope this video was helpful to some of you. If you have any suggestions, please feel free to leave them down in the comments section below. And if you have a request for a different topic that obviously we haven't covered yet, feel free to ask down below as well. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to keep up to date with future videos as well. Have a good one, guys.